y'all, this is Cindy and I'm the Tireless Tangler. Welcome back. Today's uh, Celtic Knot tutorial is going to be on how to draw this pretty cross stitch border pattern with a corner. And I'm going to show you how to design that and set it up the way that you want and a pretty easy method of getting it done, especially for you tanglers who are familiar with the pattern Huggins because really Huggins is just a Celtic knot pattern. So, we're gonna start today with just a penciled corner. And the way we're gonna set this up is we're gonna start with a square or a diamond, depending on how you care to look at it, with the bottom part from one line to the next of your corner. Yeah? Then I'm gonna have you put a loop on the top of that. Now, we are going to draw three more diamonds this way and three more diamonds this way. It will kind of match what we're doing. So we have a total of four. Try to keep your lines set up where they're going to travel from one section to the next seamlessly without um, bending. All right, and turn it. Add three more diamonds. Again, try to keep try to keep your lines as straight as possible. Feel free to erase like I do. This is actually harder than it seems. One, two, three, four. All right. Okay, pretty close. All right, so this is what we have now. Now I want you to join the second row of boxes underneath the middle so that on the top you have your loop and then box and then box. All right, now we're about to finish this up. It's really simple. We're going to draw loops between each one of these gaps on each side, okay? So the key to, to doing these loops well is to follow the line before you start the loop and then come down and follow the line after and they usually end up fairly even, although with me it's catch and release. All right, and try to keep an eye on the top. That second one may have been a bit, a bit round. Because again, you want these lines to move seamlessly into the next section, and those are pretty similar. Okay, let's try this one pretty good and those have about the same height all the way down the row. Okay, I'm gonna get it, go over here and do the same thing. Loop, follow the line and woo, <laughs> follow the line and loop better than that. There we go. And loop. Okay, now do your insides. Loop here, 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 and here. So this is the pretty little pattern that you have left over from that. Now comes the fun Huggins part. So grab your pen. I'm using my uh, Pigma Micron in black for this first part. Put the glasses on, this will go better. So first I want you to draw a small little dot exactly in the center, as close as you can make it, of each of these little sections. Try to make sure they line up, up and down and going sideways. 
to stay within your framework. It's a little bit off, it's not the end of the world. so bad huh okay now for the Huggins you all know that Huggins Huggins is a Zentangle original pattern okay and it's done like this with dots And this is sort of your little grid. And then with Huggins, you, you alternate drawing lines between the inner edge and the outer edge of each one of these. So let me show you. Like that. Okay, and then outside, and they alternate. Okay, so this would be outside inside okay inside outside and outside inside and then you're gonna do the same thing here it's your inside sorry I'm not doing this very well and over like that basically except for the mistake Okay, so we're gonna use this same technique of the inner sides, connecting the inner sides and the outer sides right here, all right? So I want you to start, and it, honestly, it doesn't matter where you start, wherever you think it would be uh, the easiest for you, but I like to start up here at the top and work my way around. That way, um, I know I'm headed right. It does not matter which way you point this. If you do this on one side or the other, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm going to do mine like this, okay? Now, the pattern would tell you that the next one down needs to go the opposite way, right? So now over here, we're going to mirror this one. So this is going to be on the outside. Yes? Okay, so this one is going to be inside, like that. Okay, now here's another one where we don't have both sides, but we know from this one that we can do that here. And then we're gonna mirror over here, all right? Let's keep going with this, alternating sides. And then down here, it's going to be the same. Alternate the sides and then mirror. Okay, so right now, this is what we have, okay? Now turn your tile 90 degrees and we're going to do match up these again. We're gonna start, I'm gonna start at one end, it doesn't matter. And you can tell by the way these are set up where your um, next lines go. When it's on the outside edges, then your lines go on the inside, okay? All right, I'm gonna join this. All right, and I'm gonna turn this over. I'm gonna do the same thing.
Okay, I think I've got most of it in. So you should have something that looks similar to this. All right, half our work is done. Now, I don't want you to get confused. So we're gonna take this from the top, all right? We're gonna start right here. Wait, let me think this through, that's wrong. <laughs> okay, I remembered what we were supposed to do. Okay, 180 degrees on your tile and start right here to the, <laughs> to my left of, or to my right, of the top connection right here, okay? So we're basically going to bring this up and over, okay? And we're gonna match this like that, all right? Now, go down to the end We'll actually come back, take the next one, curve it up, and match the line coming out the side. Okay, same thing. Curve it up and match that line. All right, and this one is going to be the same thing. We're gonna take it from the tip up here and through there. All right, now. Let's take it from the bottom side and start down here. First, let's take this out. Since this is an over and an under, this is gonna be an over here. Let me extend that out a little bit. And I'm gonna turn the corner here and block that off. All right. So now we're gonna do similar to what we did on this side, which is come out here, come around, and join up there. Start here, come around, and join up with this line here. All right, we've got that whole side done. Now, let's start, let's move over here by joining this little bridge under here. Okay, and then we're going to bring this down and around to here. Yes, this is going to come around, stop at the tip. Whoops, I already have that there, don't I? So we're going to bring this out just like we did on the other side, and we're going to go underneath it since this was an over. So, I'm going to come out here and stop there. Come out here, line up your lines. Okay, come out here. And we're finished. Now you just go in, blacken up your little spots where your dots are. Make sure your lines continue correctly. If you, if you feel the need to, you can take a larger bore pen or a larger nibbed pen and go over your lines to um, catch any wiggly spots. Uh, this actually turned out fairly well considering who was drawing it. Now, for these ends where we ended. <laughs> okay. You can bring these out and together in a point on top of this. You can bring them out and into a squared off edge. You can um, put a loop in here. You can turn them into mukas. You can do whatever you want or you can continue with your diamonds going down and make this a continual border all the way around if you want. Uh, I'm just going to do this part because otherwise I would just take too long. So this is how you design the uh, running border with the turn. And I hope that you have enjoyed getting to know Huggins a little bit. And if you have any questions, of course, 
hit me up in comments and I will be happy to respond. Um, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you back next week for a Celtic Knot Work Tangle Index. We will see how that works out and I will see you next time on the Tireless Tangler.